Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Can-Am. The ride says it all. Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. And by Yamaha Conquer Outdoors. In last week's episode of Dirt Tracks, we traveled to the 2017 Lewa Festival in the United Arab Emirates to witness firsthand the huge impact Can-Am's new Maverick X3 is having on the region. The Lewa Festival is all about going fast and showing off big horsepower. One of the most famous attractions here at Liwa is a dune called the Morib Sand Dune. Uh, translated into English, marine means sort of angry. That's what, something you can like, come across if you're not ready for it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's a painful You job. just launch right off of that yeah. eh, and, and die. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that definitely takes the cake for being the steepest. I don't know if I necessarily refer to it as angry. It can definitely be intimidating. It's definitely been intimidating for a lot of sports side-by-sides for, for a number of years because really nothing to date um, leading up to sort of the Maverick X3 with the exception of a couple lucky runs was able to sort of climb the Morib sand dune, straight vertical ascent uh, and get to the top. One of the things that we uh, set out to do is, is to really try to prove the, you know, the Maverick X3 in terms of all the praise that it's been getting is, you know, let's, uh, let's see if we can take a run at the, the dune. We went out one morning and we thought, uh, let's, let's give this a crack. The Marib Sand Dune is about 300 meters high. Uh, the slope is about 1,650 meters from bottom to top, and it gets as steep as 50 degrees uh, slope. That's really, really steep, especially when you consider a lot of like steep alpine ski runs, might be about 35 degrees. So when you get up to 50 degrees, it's pretty intimidating. The other thing that's really unique about the Marib uh, Dune that you have to climb is versus like Cadillac Hill that's really popular in uh, Glamis is it doesn't have much of a, a shallow slope in terms of a run. When you get to the base of the, uh, the hill, it automatically starts getting steep and that, that robs you of horsepower right away. First run, we had a bit of a, a run at it and uh, approached it and sure enough, Maverick X3 uh, came through with the, all the expectations that we had for it. Clearly pulled up the hill, never really had any hesitation it went up the first uh, plateau, and then there's two other plateaus that it needs to climb that are relatively short, but again, no problem whatsoever. That was great. That was sort of the first sort of test that we were able to put the, the Mavic X3 through uh, from our sort of international perspective. Morib Dune is, is uh, iconic in, in the UAE, and everybody knows that if you can make it up there, you've got something special. So when we had the, the first two prototypes to do some uh, marketing shots and, and videos uh, and content for social media, we went straight here to Liwa. And we took the Maverick X3 right up uh, Marib Dune, totally stopped, no modifications whatsoever, in the middle of summer. This was like literally 47 degrees at the time. And it made it up no problem and made it straight up. We, we, we did it like five or six times. And with the previous Maverick Turbo, you couldn't do that back to back. You had to let the belt rest and cool off. The Maverick X3 just did it, didn't break a sweat. That's pretty impressive, I tell you. I mean, it's just, it's just constantly pulled and it's just the smoothest power going to it. The, the QRS uh, transmission on this, it's really, really impressive. So there you go, come, we've seen it, we've conquered. That's great. One of the things that's always interesting is that when we go on a trip, I'm a firm believer is like, if there's like a chain restaurant, avoid it. Go to a local eatery and all that stuff. If there's a dive, eat at the dive because you're likely gonna have a much better uh, experience and usually a better meal. Uh, one of the things they do here in most <laughs> Middle Eastern countries for that matter is that when you have a special guest, you prepare lamb. That lamb is killed um, early in the morning, basically processed. Oh they, they boil the lamb here and then they finish it off on the grill and then they, they serve it up on, on these massive platters with rice and eggplant and potatoes and oh, this is right up my alley. Together. And you, you gather around and you sit around it and you, you enjoy the meal with the individuals that invited you. Bon appetit. Oh, that's delicious. And what's, what's, what's great about that is when you're sitting down as a gathering, you know, a meal is a perfect, opportunity 
to sort of talk about the interests of, of one another. And we've really been able to learn sort of what makes them tick out here, what they love and what it's like back in North America. So all in all, it's been just a fantastic experience out here. Here's the tongue part of it. Mm. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. The Middle East is an increasingly important part of any power sport dealer. It's, it's a relatively large market, but more importantly, it's a market that is not price sensitive and they want the latest and greatest. That's something that we've learned with, with all the individuals that we've come encounter with at this event. Previous years, Polaris, 90%. Everyone had a Razor, 1000 XP, and they did it up. This year, I, we can't tell you how many X3s we've seen. Powerful, defiant, and precise. I mean, th those are the three things that you know, the Emirati rider uh, looks for. N not necessarily that they, they know that they do, but they, that's exactly what, they're, the, what they need. And uh, that's why the Maverick X3 has done very well here in the UAE, that everybody wants this, this vehicle. The release date of the production units uh, was uh, moved up to, to, uh, to deliver them to uh, the UAE first, and just to see what happens. And, um, and as you can see, like, uh, you know, it's been crazy. It's been nonstop. They've been literally flying out the door. Uh, the, the mechanics in the workshop have been PDIing these things just like, a, like an assembly line. Ali Ali, how are you? Thanks very much for taking the time today. This individual, his name is Al Niadi, we were able to sort of meet with, and this is a gentleman that is a brand ambassador for Can-Am. He's a colonel in the military, was out here riding, you know, uh, Chirac's 250s and 400s, went to the Banshee, to the Rhino, to the Razor, but he had he transitioned over to Can-Am uh, uh, quite a while ago, and the reason why he had uh, said that he went to Can-Am was quality, reliability, and that's something that uh, is true with uh, all Can-Am products. We went out to a couple dunes, just out to a couple cool bowls. Uh, we were able to sort of get to some other areas where some pretty steep razorbacks that you sort of drop back into, and we even found some jumps. And so that was really, really cool. I can see why um, Al Niadi has risen to brand ambassador status. He's very, very um, friendly, really, really good brand ambassador for Can-Am, and more importantly for MTM. Signature thing with uh, Al Niadi is he has a massive United Arab Emirates flag that he puts on top of his car, and he always leads the pack. He has a, the utmost respect with, with his uh, friends that uh, ride with him, but Al Niadi always leads the pack. And you get some of these, what they sort of refer to as uh, tribes, riding groups, where the entire group has gone out and they've bought 12, 14 brand new X3s. In some cases, they've done it right up with full aftermarket accessories. And, and they're out there and, and they're really, really happy with how the X3 is performing. One of the groups that we were able to uh, connect with while out here was a, a group by the name of Boomer Team. There's two sort of uh, founding partners in this group. Uh, both of these individuals had been enthusiasts through and through. Uh, back in the mid-1990s, these were guys that were cruising the dunes out here on Banshees. And the Boomer Team in particular is really impressive from the standpoint of how, the professionalism in which they approach it. It's as almost as if they have uh, paid professional drivers. You look at all their vehicles, they have the exact same uh, wrap on it. Each car has a, a name uh, for the driver and then a designated number. And when we got together with them, we were just like, you know, we'd like to get some footage of you guys. You know, maybe start following one another and, and we'll, we'll get some cool footage. Before you know it, it seemed like it was a full out drag race. Guys just like bossing through berms and drifting and they were like right down to the rev limiter on the, on the X3 just like killing it. I was just out there wanting to follow them and you know, we'll get some cool footage. But before you know it, the guys behind me, they're just like, nope, we're passing you and all this stuff. It was 
So it got to like pretty much a full on race, but it was a great time spending time with them. One of the unique aspects for me is that I've ridden the dunes a lot. And it's really, really neat as you're sort of cresting a huge dune in terms of falling back on the Razorback, or you're climbing up a big bowl, or you're having to sort of side drift the bowl to get out of it. When you have visibility during the daylight, that's really fine. But we uh, were coming back from about 20 miles or so out of the, the village here. And it was like, it was darkness that set in. It was basically pitch black outside. Temperatures automatically drop as soon as the sun sets here in the desert. And uh, we were having to make our way back out. And so that was a really unique aspect and to be able to ride in the dark. Luckily, we were following the guys. They, they knew their way like the back of their hand. But it was really, really neat to be able to navigate the dunes in the middle of the night. It was, it was a cool experience for sure. Just immersing ourselves in the culture. We had uh, lamb for uh, lunch. Now we're having uh, camel. So it's been it's been really neat uh, coming out to a lot of these Can-Am events because they've all been international. We've done Mexico back in September of 2016. We did uh, United Arab Emirates, uh, January of 2017. I'm interested to see sort of what happens uh, come uh, you know the fall of 2017 in terms of what other areas that we can go to. Um, definitely be interested in going out to, to Africa to explore an event, uh, or for the matter, anywhere else where Canon is, is willing to sort of take us, we'll be there. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by MBRP Power Sports, race inspired performance. When you've got the longest travel and the biggest horsepower, there's no need to stop there. And that's precisely why Jared from MBRP is back in the Trail Tech shop with us. And he's gonna show us a new product that MBRP just released. So Jared, tell me a little bit about what this is and what it's gonna go on. All right, so we've got our all new PowerTech 4 dual slip-on for the Can-Am Maverick uh, X3. You know, super pumped about this system. Our design team did a killer job. You know, we guarantee our fitment with all the systems. It's dyno tested, flow bench to ensure you're not gonna get the engine lights or bogging. And the most important thing too, with enough back pressure and measuring uh, with our flow bench, you're not gonna require uh, like a fuel program or an ECU flash. So again, they're all constructed from a 304 stainless, so they're easily polished. This isn't a coating, so this is easily, you know, polished up or when you wash it, there's no coating to scratch off. That is the true material. So one of the really unique parts about this exhaust setup is the versatility. I mean, you can buy just the can and put that on with your stock head pipe. You can buy just the race head pipe, put that on with your stock can, or you can buy the whole package together. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we tried to kind of build it, you know, very mindful of the customer, more or less. So it gives them some flexibility. You know, guys want just that extra little bit of horsepower gain. You can add the slip on and you can do the head, the front pipe later. Um, with the front pipe, you're going to get some lower EGTs and an increased flow. So it's definitely, you know, even if you want to just leave the stock muffler on and add the front head pipe, you can do that. So. You're going to lower your EGTs. You're going to just make the system work better. But obviously, it's designed to work together. Exactly. Yeah. Now it's interesting to note that with the full head pipe and silencer together, MBRP saw the air fuel ratio stay steady between 11.6 and 11.8. Or in other words, you don't need a fuel programmer as increased flow does not cause the engine fuel management software to become confused. And along with a reduction in weight, you're also gonna see 23% better flow and lower EGTs with just the race pipe itself. Okay, Jared, so when we're talking about the silencer, there's another reduction in weight, but really the big news here is the horsepower, right? Yeah, we get an extra two horsepower with this unit. Cool, and when it comes to the looks, it's far superior. I mean, we're losing the rear the rear cover panel and we've got the PowerTech 4 signature dual stack exhaust, so it's gonna look pretty sweet. You bet, yeah, it's definitely a look that complements the power we've done, so let's get it on. Cool, let's do it. Install the silencer is simple and easy, utilizing the stock mounting locations. The MBRP silencer is noticeably lighter but that takes a back row seat to the impressive good looks of this PowerTech 4 slip-on when linked to the race head pipe, you've got a very clean and professional looking system. The precision tuning of the MBRP engineering team ensures that we will have a throaty and rich exhaust note along with crisp throttle response while still maintaining well-mannered drivability in low speed situations. Now, if we were to run the silencer alone, we'd see the decibels stay legal at 96, around 4,000 RPM. Linking the head pipe will increase that sound and oh, what a sound it is. If horsepower had a soundtrack, this would be it. 
But we've taken the already insanely strong 172 horsepower Rotax, we've added horsepower, we've reduced EGTs, and we've given it a beautiful exhaust note. And to even add to that, on, the, on our front pipe too, we actually include a factory installed O2 bung in addition to accompany the factory heat shield. Um, on the back end here on the slip on, we include the United States forestry approved spark arresters, so to keep it as legal as possible and keep those guys happy as well. And we're doing all of this for under a grand US. It's pretty impressive. Closed captioning of Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailer, built for adventure. Polaris continues to innovate in model year 17. Clearly, it is innovation that has taken Polaris to what is rumored to be more than a 50% share of the utility side-by-side -side marketplace. On this week's test ride, we're going to look at another innovative Polaris side-by-side, -side, the Ranger North Star with HVAC. We're pretty sure the acronym HVAC, H-V-A-C, grabbed your attention like it did ours. Yes, this Ranger comes with a fully integrated factory installed air conditioning system, not to mention full cab heat. The addition of this rarely seen feature in the utility side-by-side -side biz opens the door on a whole new world of off-road comfort and convenience. We're gonna let ourselves get a little carried away here. Can you imagine a full-on Razor 1000 Turbo with an enclosed cab and factory air? Yeah, we're getting way ahead of ourselves. However, a close examination of this fully integrated, slick AC system speaks to something very important. Polaris has a ton of jing invested in this technology, and that means only one thing. They have to use it in more models and maybe more platforms. Economies of scale dictate the more you sell of something, the less it costs to produce. What's truly interesting is the backstory on where this technology originated. Over a year ago, we were invited to participate in an exclusive unveil of a radical amphibious track vehicle Polaris was developing for the Canadian military. The unusual vehicle, called the Rampage, uses a Polaris 1000 Pro Star twin and, you guessed it, a fully developed and integrated HVAC system. The development of the Rampage included a full functioning HVAC system. You can see why it relies on very sophisticated air management. AJ ripped the prototype Rampage under extremely rough conditions, including going fully amphibious. As you can see, there's simply no way this vehicle can be operated in extreme cold or extreme heat without a climate controlled cab. Obviously, the new Ranger Northstar HVAC is defined by its factory installed, sealed, comfortable, all season cab. However, there's a lot more going on here than just an HVAC system. This is a Polaris Ranger, and that means versatile, capable performance. The last Ranger Northstar we tested included factory heat, but not air conditioning, and used a ProStar 900 engine. This latest North Star rocks a 1,000, kicking out over 80 ponies. There's tons of grunt for pulling trailers, light agricultural equipment, or a dump box fully loaded with firewood, seed, road gravel, hay, and the list goes on and on with the air conditioning running. Polaris proven, well-ventilated, continuously variable tranny is tough as nails and keeps the engine in the meat of its power band under heavy loads or spirited trail riding. The North Star has another cool feature we came to appreciate when plowing snow. It's this specially gated shifter that allows for slam bam, low range to reverse shifts when plowing snow, something that snow plowing chores require. It's no coincidence the Ranger North Star is called just that, the North Star. This side-by-side -side might be the most factory ready winter use vehicle of its kind. With an airtight heated cab, a giant windshield wiper and washer, and a special plowing shifting sequence, we think a ton of North Stars will be sold with Polaris plows. If we had our way, the North Star would include a motorized dumping box for spreading road sand on sidewalks and driveways. It's interesting to note that while I spent most of this test ride describing the Ranger HVAC's utility capabilities, most of the people who buy one of these off-road mini trucks are going to use it for recreation, at least some of the time. Recreational use of the North Star is literally a given. We can't think of a better way to get in and out of a hunt camp in the late fall than with a full cab North Star. How about heading to your favorite fishing hole in black fly season with the windows closed and the AC clicked on full? 
Maybe it's a dusty July day on a ride into the backcountry. Flick on the AC and experience complete comfort. Keep in mind the Ranger North Star with its fully integrated HVAC system does not require any compromises because it has air conditioning. This is a full-on Ranger 1000, and that means it has true all-wheel drive, turf mode, and the best suspension in the industry. Is it capable? Ah, uh, yeah. When the dust settles on a long trail ride and you swing open the door of your North Star HVAC to talk with your friends, they'll be confounded by the cool breeze wafting from the Ranger's cab. What happens next will be even more remarkable. Your friends will be unable to stop dreaming as they eat your dust on a hot summer day of how nice it would be if their side-by-side -side had factory air. Dirt Tracks Television has been sponsored by Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation, Can-Am, the ride says it all, and by Arctic Cat, share our passion. If you enjoyed this content, make sure you check out Dirt Tracks Television on the Outdoor Channel, Outdoor Life Network, and Wild TV, so you can see all of our videos before they hit it online.